Now that we have seen how to obtain the derivatives of standard trig functions, we are going to go over a few more examples. Let's say we want to differentiate the following function, starting with the function f of x, defined by x squared plus 3 cosine x. We have seen um, formulas to differentiate all six trig functions, but the basic ones are the derivative of cosine x, sine x, and tangent x. If we differentiate x squared plus 3 cosine x, derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, so we get the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of 3 cosine x, which is 3 times derivative of cosine x. Therefore, the derivative is 2x, because it's a derivative of x squared, plus 3 multiplied by negative sine x, which is the derivative of cosine. In other words, 2x minus 3 sine x. Moving on to the second function, defined by secant x minus 3 cotangent x, there are two ways to differentiate that. On one hand, if you remember the formulas for the derivative of secant and of cotangent, you can just apply those and you would obtain almost immediately the derivative. But I really only expect you to remember the derivative of cosine and sine and to be able to recover the formulas for the derivative of the other four trig functions quickly from those. So let's assume we really only know the derivative of cosine and sine, even though the one of tangent is also a good thing to remember because it comes up quite a lot. So if we only know the derivative of cosine and sine, we are going to start by rephrasing g of x in terms of those functions. Secant is simply 1 over cosine x. Cotangent x is simply cosine x over sine x. And once it is written under that form, combining the quotient rule that we have here with the derivatives for cosine and sine, we will be able to differentiate this function. Namely, to obtain g prime of x, we are going to apply the quotient rule to the first term, 1 over cosine x, where 1 is the top and cosine x is the bottom. In the quotient rule, we start with the derivative of the top. In this particular case, the top is 1, so its derivative is 0, which means that the first term in the quotient rule is going to be 0. Therefore, what remains is the second term, the opposite of the derivative of the bottom, multiplied by the top. So the opposite of the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, multiplied by the top, which is just 1. And all this is going to be about the bottom squared, in other words, cosine square x. Then we have minus 3 times the derivative of cosine x over sine x, for which we're going to use again the quotient rule. We obtain this formula because when I calculate the derivative of the top multiplied by the bottom, it's going to be derivative of cosine is negative sine, multiply by sine, so I get negative sine square. When I calculate derivative of the bottom multiplied by the top, the bottom is sine x, so the derivative is cosine, and I multiply by the top, which is cosine, so I get cosine square x. And the bottom squared is, of course, sine square x. Now, at the top here, in the second part, we have the opposite of cosine square x plus sine square x, which is 1. Therefore, after simplification, we obtain for the first term in the sum sine x over cosine square x. For the second fraction, negative 3 multiplied by negative 1 over sine square x, in other words, 3 over sine square x. We can rephrase that as sine x multiplied by secant square x, because 1 over cosine square can also be written as secant squared. And similarly, 1 over sine square x can be rewritten as cosecant squared x. For the third function, we have again a quotient, so we're going to again apply the quotient rule. The top is cosine x plus x, the bottom is 2x squared minus sine x. Applying the quotient rule, we get derivative of the top multiplied 
pi the bottom, in other words, derivative of cosine x plus x, multiplied by 2x squared minus sine x. Then I subtract the derivative of the bottom, that is, derivative of 2x squared minus sine x, and multiply by the top unchanged, which is cosine x plus x, and divide by the square of the bottom, in other words, the square of 2x squared minus sine x. What remains to be done is to calculate the two derivatives, derivative of cosine x plus x first, derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, of x is 1, so we get 1 minus sine x, and then for the second derivative, uh, the derivative of 2x squared minus sine x, we get 4x for the derivative of 2x squared, and cosine x for the derivative of sine x. So we obtain this formula for the derivative of h. This fourth function here looks complicated, and it looks like something that we don't know how to differentiate yet. However, if you try to rewrite things only in terms of sine and cosine, you see that what we have is really the square root of cosine x multiplied by its reciprocal, and therefore it's really the square root of 1, in other words, the constant function 1. But the derivative of a constant function is 0, and therefore this is a derivative of the fourth function. For the fifth function, we try to differentiate the function defined by x squared cosine x plus 3 tangent x. See that we have a sum of two terms, and the first one is a product of two functions, and therefore we're going to need the product rule. So what do we obtain if we differentiate y with respect to x? To differentiate x squared cosine x, we use the product rule, where x squared is the first factor and cosine x the second factor. Applying the product rule, we obtain 2x cosine x plus x squared multiplied by negative sine x. Because the first term in the product rule is derivative of the first factor, in our case derivative of x squared is 2x, multiplied by second factor unchanged. Then we add the first factor unchanged, x squared, multiply by the derivative of the second factor, so derivative of cosine x, which gives us negative sine x. The third term in the result is 3 secant squared x, simply because the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. So we obtain 2x cosine x minus x squared sine x plus 3 secant squared x. Let's turn to another kind of exercise. Let's say we're looking for an equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function cosine x plus 2x sine x at x equal pi over 2. This is the line whose slope is the derivative of the function at x equal pi over 2 and goes through the point of first coordinate pi over 2 and second coordinate the value of the function at x equal pi over 2. To get the value of y for x equal pi over 2, we simply plug x equal pi over 2 in the function, and we obtain cosine of pi over 2, which is 0, plus pi times sine of pi over 2, which is 1. In other words, we obtain pi. This is the second coordinate of the point of tangency. As for the slope, we need to first calculate the derivative of y with respect to x. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then we have 2 times the derivative of the product, x times sine x. So to calculate the derivative of this product, we use the product rule. We get derivative of the first factor, which is x, gives us 1. We multiply by the second factor and change, gives us sine x plus x multiplied by derivative of sine x, in other words, x multiplied by cosine x. After simplification, we obtain sine x plus 2x cosine x. This, of course, is not the slope of the tangent line. Slope of the tangent line is given by the value of this function at x equal pi over 2. So now if we plug x equal pi over 2, we obtain sine of pi over 2, which is 1, plus 2 times pi over 2, multiplied by cosine pi over 2, and cosine pi over 2 is 0. So we obtain simply 1.
In other words, the tangent line is the line of slope 1 through the point of coordinates pi over 2 pi, and therefore its equation is y minus pi equal 1 multiplied by x minus pi over 2, which rewrites as y equal x plus pi over 2. Let's look at one more application. We have a particle that is moving along a straight line with law of motion given by s of t is 2t plus 1 multiplied by cosine, cosine t minus sine t where t is the time measured in seconds and s of t is the position measured in meters. And we want to know what is the initial velocity of the particle. In other words, the velocity at time zero. By definition, if s of t is a position, the velocity at time zero is the value of the derivative of the position at time zero. So this is what we want to obtain. We're going to obtain a velocity that is measured in meter per second. So we differentiate this function. We have a sum of two terms, 2t two plus 1 multiplied by cosine t, and then plus negative sine t. The first term in the sum is a product, so we use a product rule. So we start with derivative of the first factor, which is derivative of 2t two plus 1. That gives us 2. We multiply by the second factor unchanged, so we get 2 cosine t. Then we add the product of the first factor on change, which is 2t plus 1, by the derivative of the second factor, which is negative sine t. Then the derivative of sine t is cosine t, so we subtract cosine t. After simplification, we obtain cosine t minus 2t plus 1 sine t. What we're looking for is not this function as a function of t, but its value for t equals 0. So, what remains to be done is simply to plug t equals 0 in this function. And if we do so, we obtain cosine of 0, which is 1, minus 2 times 0 plus 1, that's 1, times sine of 0, which is 0. In other words, we obtain simply that the velocity, the initial velocity, is 1 meter per second. So now you should turn to the homework on trig functions and once you are done with this part and the first squeeze um, on trig functions you should move on to the second half of this model which is the chain rule.